wow, that's bright. Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome back to Our Wyoming Life, where winter has arrived. Temperatures have been down into the minus digits at night. We've been getting up to maybe in the mid-20s or so during the day, but that means that we have to get out and start feeding cows. So I'm inviting you to join me today as we feed the cows for the first time this winter. It's not even good snowball making snow. <laughs> Okay, so I know that we've uh, fed the cows already. We've uh, given them their little bit of Thanksgiving treats here earlier this week, but now it's time to actually get serious about this whole feeding thing. Now, last week when I fed them their treats, I just took the tractor out, dropped off a bale with a bucket, broke it up a little bit, let them eat on it. But now that there's about uh, four inches of snow on the ground, it's time to actually start feeding the cows the way that we're supposed to. And that's gonna take a little bit of equipment. I'm gonna bring you guys along as we put out our first bales with the Hustler this year, but it's not quite that easy. Uh, we actually have to go hook up to the Hustler. We have to make sure everything's working. And I think I need to put fuel in the tractor. And that brings us over here to our fuel tanks, which we get lots of questions about and I haven't really talked about too much on the channel, so let's dig in. So we have fuel, two fuel tanks here on the ranch. We have an unleaded tank, which is 500 gallons, and we have a diesel tank here, which is about 300 gallons. Uh, this one's actually made out of an old propane tank. Uh, Gilbert built this many, many years ago and we still use it. Um, we have pumps attached to each one so that we can pump directly into the tractor. It makes life a whole lot easier. You don't have to use like a manual pump or, or anything like that. So these are actually just old gas station pumps that we picked up somewhere and mounted them on to the, uh, onto the tank. So this is a gas boy. We're gonna kick it on and start filling. And there it goes. So this tank, I do believe, I can't quite remember, this is the 6410 tractor. Uh, we actually, this summer, got rid of the 6420. 6420 uh, was a newer tractor, lots more electronics. We started having problems with it, uh, with the wiring, stuff like that. Ended up taking it into John Deere. The bill was outrageous, and we decided just to sell the tractor, leaving us just with the 6420. Like I said, it's an older tractor, but a lot less stuff to go wrong with it. Uh, the diesel that we're putting in is actually a dyed diesel. It's for agricultural use only. And uh, you can't technically run anything on the highway. You can't put it in my pickup and run down the road if you get caught doing that. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty hefty fine because we don't pay taxes on agricultural diesel. It's also a number two diesel, which is good for cold weather. It keeps the diesel from gelling up. At a certain temperature, diesel actually gets thicker, and then that's gonna cause all kinds of problems uh, with your injection system and everything else. So uh, this is the 6410, like I said. I don't know if I've ever ran the Hustler feeder on this tractor. I usually ran it on the 6420 last year, so this will be a little bit of an adventure. Should hook up exactly the same way. Flow should be the same, but we're gonna have to kind of tinker with things just a little bit probably to get it to work right. So we're gonna wait for fuel to fill up. We'll head on over to the Hustler, we'll get it hooked up, and then we're gonna go grab some bales and go visit the cows. All right, just over 41 gallons into this thing. So that's a lot of money <laughs> that, uh, that we just put in. Uh, and the good thing is that we, when we do buy in bulk like this, we do get a little bit of a discount. It's not much, um, but we do get a little bit of one. So that helps out. And then they bring out a big truck and they fill these up for us. So uh, tanks are a godsend of the ranch. I couldn't imagine having to drive the tractor to town every time I had to fill it up. While we're heading over to the Hustler, I want to remind you that our Black Friday sale is still going on until midnight tonight. You can save up to 15% site-wide. Uh, that's from hats to shirts, hoodies, uh, drinkware, all that kind of cool stuff, as well as 10% off all beef, pork, 
and jerky. It's the best prices you're gonna see of the year. And uh, we really hope that you guys can head on over to our website, rwyomilife.com to check that out. Now I've gotta make a short a little bit later, so remind me when we get down to the cows, I'm gonna make a short too to come out today to remind people to head to the website also. Uh, ranching, of course, is a business. So is YouTube. We're gonna jump out here for one quick second. We have to flip the hitch around on the Hustler feeder. We'll talk about it really quick while we're out here. This is the hitch, and as you can see, it's actually sideways. This thing swings back and forth, which is great for going over rough terrain. We also have to bring up our hitch just a little bit so it'll line up. Obviously, this thing's been sitting out here for a while. In fact, we don't really have any reason to use it over the summer unless we're spreading hay somewhere or doing something like that um, we did use it for mixing hay for quite a while uh, for the feeders or for the steers and the going into the archway feeder or mixer grinder i can figure out what i'm talking about but um, as for probably the last three or four months this thing's just been waiting for us to come over and get it so this is our hustler feeder it is uh, available hustlerequipment.com hustler great company to work with um, we've been working with them for a little bit over what uh, two years now and uh, we test a lot of their equipment in fact you can see all this behind us this is actually all hustler equipment uh, bale grabbers harrows spears buckets cake feeder spreader all kinds of crazy stuff this is the chainless th205 now you might have seen me pick it up uh, earlier this year this is a brand new model this one uh, is actually a little bit heavier built than our old one so hopefully everything works good with the 6420. Uh, we do have a few maintenance things that we have to do on it i think there's a few zerk points if i can get over here on the back that we have to make sure that we get in and grease but i don't quite remember yep there's a few of them here. So we're gonna pull this over by the shop, grab a grease gun, a grease gun, and uh, get this thing all greased up because it has been sitting for a little while. I was a little worried I forgot a pin, but we've got one sitting here waiting for us. The pin is what actually holds this thing to the tractor just one single pin. We also have our jack here, which I need to get out of the way. Has a nice little storage spot here on the tongue. The next part of this is I get to remember which one of the hydraulics hook up to which port on the back of the tractor. These are our hydraulic ports. We're going to be utilizing both of these today. They're actually kind of backwards. You think this would be number one and this would be number two, but it's actually backwards. So number one and then number two. The uh, hydraulics are color coded because we can't be expected to keep this stuff straight. And I'll probably hook them up wrong the first time. Okay. So I think the green goes in number one. And I think I did. Oh, wait a minute. This might be. Okay, we're going to try this. It might hook up a little bit differently than our old one. And like I said, it's been a while. So we're going to hook everything up. These are just push-in fittings. All you have to do is just get them in there and push them down. Okay. I think we're all hooked up. We're going to actually jump in and try this out and see if I have this thing hooked up correctly. Otherwise, we're gonna re rearrange in things. So, ideally, what should happen is when I move this lever, this is number one, this should move the table up and down. Okay, there goes the table down, and there goes the table up. The other one actually kicks on our rotor, and that would be number two, which is right here. And you can see our rotor right there in the back, and there it goes, kicks it on and we can go both ways with the rotor if we feel like it. Okay, so it looks like we are hooked up correctly. I'm gonna close this because it's cold out and we're gonna pull over to the shop, get a little bit of grease for this thing. Now, I don't know if you can hear that little tiny chirping sound that's going on. 
This tractor was actually just in for service with John Deere. Uh, we got it back and it started doing this weird chirping thing. Uh, we don't get any errors or anything, no, uh, no codes, no nothing. It just starts chirping after a little while. Nice thing is that the uh, guys from John Deere, I called them about it. Uh, they're going to be on their way to, to take a look at it this week. Hopefully get it fixed up. I don't know what it is. Um, it doesn't seem to be detrimental to the system. It's just annoying more than anything. We're shutting things down while we go grab a grease gun and I'll be right back. All right, here we go. This is my handy dandy uh, Dewalt grease gun. It's cordless, which is great. Uh, if you've been using grease guns, I suggest getting a cordless one just because they're so much easier. It actually has a flashlight on it, which I'm not sure who's out greasing in the dark, but if that's your thing, then it has a flashlight on it as well. So obviously not sponsored by DeWalt or anything, but I do like DeWalt tools. Uh, the backstory to that is that Gilbert, when he was alive, he had Milwaukee tools. I wanted to get tools of my own and I didn't want to get Milwaukee because then our tools would get mixed up. So I decided to go d with DeWalt, pretty much just uh, luck of the draw. Although I do like the bumblebee color scheme. Now, if, <clears throat> let me get in here. Now, if you've ever greased anything, you know how important it is not to get the grease all over you, but it happens. This actually has a locking um, neck on it or whatever it's called, coupler, so that we can do this very simply and just fill it all up. And that's how I know it's full, although there's probably some other type of indication, maybe. But these are just pins, so it's not really that big of a deal. We just want to make sure we get enough grease in there to, to fill everything up. So there's a couple down low. Yeah, underneath the machine here that I got to get down to. But this is the main portion that needs greasing. And this part of the bale, or this part of the bale feeder, is actually what picks up a bale and then drops it into the bed for feeding. Nice thing is that this machine is relatively new, so I don't have that many grease points that are clogged or anything like that, but I'm sure somewhere along the line I'll show you how I deal with those. Okay, so next stop is the hay yard where we are going to pick up two bales of hay. We're actually going to be feeding two groups of cows today. Our steers have a bale feeder, so they've got a bale in there. They're pretty much good to go. But we do need to go back and feed the cows, and we need to feed the heifers uh, their bale also. There is uh, about, I think, 16, 18 heifers in the, uh, in the heifer pasture right now, or in the triangle pasture, where the heifers are. And although they don't need a full bale, we can feed a full bale to them. They'll eat it over time. We're not looking for a whole bunch more snow, so we should be relatively good to go with just getting two bales. Back up into the tractor we go. We'll probably get our little beeping sound going on. Nope, we're good for right now. All right, let's go get some food for the cows. You know what that beeping reminds me of? Driving with your turn signal on. I feel like I'm in Florida, except for all the snow and the lack of people. And there is our hay yard. Like I said, we're gonna be grabbing two bales. I'm gonna try to get you guys a pretty good view of uh, what this thing looks like as it loads bales. I think we're gonna go ahead and load up both bales even though we're gonna feed one way down there and one really just like right back here. Um, but we're gonna load up both of them because I wanna show you how the Hustler can carry two bales for us when we go out to feed if we need to feed more. So this is one of the most handy things about it. You don't have to run back and forth grabbing bales. Technically, I guess with the bucket, you could even grab three bales.
So here's the trick to getting two bales on the Hustler feeder. You have to line your bales up, one in front of the other, because you're gonna pick one up and then just back right into the other one. Don't really have the best view behind you, and I've seen people that have had cameras and other things on their Hustler feeder, but this seems to work really good for me. So we're just gonna pull forward here, and we're gonna put these two bales in a line, just like that. We're gonna back away from it, and then we're gonna swing and back into it. All right, once we get about here, we can drop our table, which then switches our number two hydraulic to now control the back, these back two spears. We're gonna drive them directly into that bale. And lift it up, wrong way. Once we get this bale to about here, then, We can come around here to the back. We're actually gonna cut this net wrap off. Uh, some of the bale will probably fall down into the table here, but that's fine. It'll still get to the cows that way, but we just have to cut off this net wrap. This is the easiest way that I've found to do this. Um, you can cut it on the ground. Your chances are you're probably gonna lose some of your bale on the ground. So this way, it actually falls right in the table and it's ready to feed to the cows anyway. The only problem with doing it this way is if you're uh, vertically challenged, it might make a little bit of a difference. Okay, I've got the net wrap cut, and we can just pull it off. And there we go, there's our net wrap. Handy dandy net wrap holder here in the front. Kind of a garbage can type deal. We'll just put this right in here until we can get to the incinerator to burn it. Now we can drop this bale down. Once it's down, we can remove our spears from this bale. They will come all the way down. And then we can raise them up a little bit, back up, and grab the next one. Once we're in that bale, we go the right way. We can lift that bale up and bring it along with us. So it's that simple. We now have a bale ready to feed. We have another bale that we can carry with us. Technically, like I said, we could still bear, carry a bale with the front of the tractor if we needed to. I wouldn't suggest carrying two, mostly because this size of tractor isn't really built to handle that much weight. Each one of these bales weighs about 1,400 pounds. So 2,800 pounds in the front of this tractor would not be a good idea. I could see, oh my gosh, I almost fell. I can see things. I can see bad things happening if we had 2,800 pounds at the front of this tractor. So next up, we're gonna head down to the cows. They're about a mile and a half, maybe two miles away and get them fed. Lots of bales here to feed this winter. We're probably averaging about two bales a day. Or again, that 2,800 pounds of feed per day going out to the, uh, to the cows, to the horses, to the bulls, to the... Uh, I don't know, donkeys, goats, pigs, whatever, we'll eat hay, so. But it is nice to have the hay. We've been there where we didn't have the hay, so I'm very happy and thankful that it is here and ready for us. Hopefully the cows are ready for us too, but we'll find out in just a second. Again, this is the uh, first real feeding of the cows. Uh, this is something that takes place every single day, whether, uh, 
permitting. No, it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the weather's doing. Uh, you have to get out and feed the animals. And this is the one way that I've found to do it that is, first of all, really efficient. And I'll show you when we get down here. The way that the hustler lays out the bale is basically exactly how it was when we harvested it. We call them windrows. And when we come by with the baler and pick up that windrow, that's what makes the bale. Now we're basically well, we're like on Food Network. We're making those deconstructed meals. So we're deconstructing a bale, not a taco. But I have to have deconstructed tacos. They're not bad. But it, I end up reconstructing them into a taco anyway. So I don't really understand the point. But we are going to drop this thing off. I'll show you what it looks like, how it works, and uh, why the cows like it so much, and why I like it so much also. So that's all coming up. Well, it looks like the cows heard us coming. It was either the tractor or this annoying beeping sound. Um, we're gonna actually draw them over here, though. I wanna get a little bit away from them. They were heading back towards the hay yard, which is not where I want them to be. Although the gates are closed, I don't need the, uh, the added stress of them pushing on any fences. Okay, so we are here in the little pasture. Uh, it's about a couple hundred acres, maybe, where the cows are hanging out as of right now. We are gonna stop really quick turn off the annoying beeping sound, open up the back window, and we're gonna get ready to feed this bale out. So all I have to do is raise up the table and get this bale up to where we want it. Once I've got the bale where I want it, I can kick on those rotors. And then here comes our bale. right back into a nice little windrow. But after a while, we'll end up with an empty feeder like that. Now we can stop. drop our table back down and bring our next bale into position. We'll cut off this net wrap. And it goes right back into here. I like to call it the beer cooler. I don't think Hustler likes that very much, but it's multi-purpose. Before we drop this bale back down, I wanna thank you for reminding me to make my short. So I'm gonna do that really quick. You guys get a little behind the scenes footage of how one of those works. And hopefully you guys watch them. So I use my phone to record these. Just works a little easier. And I record a short. We'll make it a 60 second short. Ready? Here we go. Hey there, YouTube. Thanks for joining us uh, once again on this short. I'm out here actually feeding the cows for the very first time with the Hustler feeder, which is actually right there behind me. Uh, got it all hooked up today. That will be tomorrow's video. But before we get there, I really wanted to thank you guys for being there for us during our Black Friday sale. It's actually happening on our website right now, rwildlife.com. You can save up to 15% store-wide, 10% off of beef, pork, and jerky. Get yourself a little piece of the ranch and a little bit of, uh, of yumminess while you're at it. The cows all look happy. They've got their food. I've got my R1 My Life beanie on, which you can grab on our website as well. This is 15% off. And we hope that you guys are having a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow for a brand new video on our Wyoming Life.
And the glasses are because it's really, really bright out here. All the snow, lots of reflecting. There we go. That's all there is to it. We'll check in with Bambi really quick since she's right here. Hi, Bambi. How you doing? How you feeling? You happy to get some food? in this nice windrow. Everybody's all lined up, it's kind of cool. Uh, one of the nice things about feeding in the windrow like this is that the cows uh, tend to abuse it a little bit less. Like if I had a big old wide, uh, if I just unrolled a whole bale, but it's five feet wide, you're gonna catch cows laying down in it. Uh, they're gonna pee in it, they're gonna poop in it. Now, not, not saying this isn't gonna happen with this windrow, but it's a lot narrower, uh, which then causes the cows to kind of line up almost like they're at a trough, which is really good for saving hay. Um, the ground isn't quite frozen yet, so there will be a little bit of waste here. Uh, it's one of the big differences between feeding in Wyoming and feeding in, let's say, Missouri or something. Uh, we don't have to, once it gets cold enough, the ground actually freezes solid. The cows will clean this stuff up really, really well. In the meantime, right now we'll have a little bit of waste, but that's okay. We're still expecting a lot colder temperatures than we've got today. Back up in the tractor. We're gonna lower this bale into place. Pull our spears out of it, just like we did before which you can't see this time, but there's that needle right there on the front that's spinning around. That actually tells me where our spears are. So right now I know they're at the lowest spot possible. We're gonna raise them back up to get them out of the way of the cows. I don't know if you can see it, but they're actually just peeking over the bale there. That's where we want them. That way we don't have to worry about spearing a cow accidentally. All right. Now we're gonna head back to the heifers. We're gonna do the same thing. We'll do it a little faster this time. And here we are back at the gate, which leads us into the triangle pasture. We're gonna run down here and feed these heifers. Some of you guys might actually get to see us do it live if you're watching the webcams right now. Our pasture cam actually looks right out over where we're gonna be feeding these guys. Um, you can check that out on ourwyomonglife.com. Just click on webcams, and we have uh, quite a few webcams, except for the steer cam is not working right now. I've got to actually run a uh, some sort of repeater or something out there to get that working a little bit better. But we've got cameras on the goats and on the pigs, and of course, on the cows. Now, as far as I know, none of these guys have actually been fed by the hustler feeder yet. So. These heifers, these female cows down here that have not had calves yet, they'll be bred uh, this coming year. They may not know what to do with this thing. They may just kind of think it's some sort of magical machine that all of a sudden spits out hay, but we will do our best to get them over here to us and hopefully they'll be somewhat excited. They do have a couple adult cows in here with them, so uh, that's kind of their uh, adult supervision. So the adult cows should know what's going on. Hopefully they'll tell the little ones. Out comes our food. And here comes our cows. That's a really nice windrow for the cows. It's almost like a fence if you think about it so that they're eating from both sides, they're not walking through it and uh, they're preserving a lot more of this feed than you actually think that they would. So thank you very much for coming on this little adventure with me today. It may not seem like much, but it's actually an important part of every single day from here on out is feeding the cows, uh, making sure everybody's got what they need, food, water, all that kind of good stuff. And it's, uh, it's kind of nice for me. It's exciting for me because it's the start of a new thing here on the ranch, which is kind of nice because, you know, honestly, ranching can sometimes be the same thing every day over and over and over again. It's nice to have something else to mix it up. Now, ask me in about three months how much I love coming out and feeding the cows every day. You'll probably get a different answer, but not from these guys. These guys love it, and that's why we do it. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. 
Make sure you subscribe, follow along as we explore the ranch life, escape the ordinary. Head on, the web, head on over to the website. Got, got talking too fast there. Head on over to the website. And uh, if you need Christmas gifts or anything like that for any ranch enthusiast in your life, you can find all kinds of cool stuff on there. So head on over to the website, rwyomonglife.com. Take advantage of the Black Friday deals. And until next time, I hope you have a great week. And thanks for joining us on our Wyoming Life. Thank <laughs> you.